Well, Lord, I'd like to continue with the little book by Madame Rion, Practicing the Presence of God Through Prayer. It's one of the English titles. It's translated in different ways. The book was originally written in French over 300 years ago. In, fr in French, it's called Le Moyen Court, The Short Method. She calls it a short and... Uh, What's the full title? Well, it's a short and easy method of prayer. And I'm reading in here from chapter 3, where she says, for those who, who don't know how to read, that's the title of the chapter, for those who don't know how to read. It's very, there's, there's a lot, so much good in this book. What she's, say, what she's basically saying is that it doesn't matter if you can't read. You can still practice the presence of God. You can get closer to God. And I've always said that you can't study your way to God. As a matter of fact, study. See, in the Garden of Eden, it was the spoken word. It was going for words. See, enticing words, suggestive words challenging words. It was words that, that, by which Adam fell from faith, from a pure faith of trusting what he knew in his heart. The language of God is intuition, silent, wordless. You just know. Little children are close to God and they just know things. When we get older, we become totally corrupted by language, words of praise, words of criticism, See, and we, we were forced to study. Not that reading is a bad thing, or even studying a little something is, is a bad thing, but it's overdone too much. See, and the other, the aspect of it is the, is the, the, um, pre, the suggestion or the pre, precondition. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of what the, the right word is, not precondition. The, um, what the whole, idea of study is based upon. It's based upon looking to external authorities to provide you with what you need to know. Whereas a person of faith lives by faith from within. See, like Albert Einstein. The discoveries that he made, he didn't learn them anywhere. He discovered them. It's like intuition. It's like the Eureka moment, aha moment. It's like inspiration. Okay, so anyway, Madame Guillon, Guillon entitles this chapter for those who don't know how to read. So she said that they, so in other words, you don't have to be able to read, you don't have to be smart, you don't have to go to college, you don't have to have various degrees. Now, if you have a degrees and you've been corrupted by study, which most of us have, most of us have spent years and years and years in classrooms. Okay. They drag on what you could have learned in six months. It's dragged on for years. See? And um, some people, they either, see, it gets to them in one of two ways. Either they become ambitious for more knowledge, and then, they, then, they, then they've got to have more. Then you, more classes, more knowledge, more degrees. See, they just, they become addicted to it. Because if they ever stopped, then they would have to face themselves what they've become, how empty they've become in their ambitious pursuit. Then others have learning blocks. They resent they resented the pressure. See? And they develop a learning block. So they too have a problem, you see, with study. So what I'm saying is remember Paul. Paul was very studied. Okay? He was very studied. So, and yet he, God rescued him. So if you've, if you've been corrupt, totally corrupted by education and spent years and years or decades, see, then it doesn't preclude you from finding the presence of God, but it can. So you have to be careful. It can be a stumbling block. So here's what Madame Guillon says. She says, qu'il commence par un acte profond d'adoration et d'anéantissement devant Dieu. 
that they begin with a profound act of adoration and self, um, a humbling of self, um, a forget, forgetting of self, uh, putting the ego aside, that's it. A, 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 sit, sitting quietly and getting your ego out of the way. Okay. Et là, and there, tâchons fermer les yeux du cœur. Close your eyes. Qu'il ouvre ceux de l'âme et qu'il la ramasse au-dedans. So you close your external eyes and it opens the eyes of the soul. And then you gather yourself or recollect yourself within. Okay, she's telling people to do. Et s'occupant directement de la présence du Dieu par une foi vivre que Dieu est en eux. And occupying yourself um, with the, uh, thinking about or sensing, noticing the presence of God with a lively, with a live faith that God is in you. That God is within. Sans laisser répandre leur puissance et leur sens au de dehors. Without letting your powers and your senses spread out. See, Things are always pulling us out, aren't they? Pulling us out into the world. Things to see, to do, to worry about, to reach for. We're always reaching for something. We reach for our iPhone. We reach for the for music. We reach for food. We reach for the remote control for the television. We reach for the mouse to what to see. We're always reaching for something. So, so she's saying just sit quietly. Recollect yourself within. It's like withdrawing within, okay, and sensing the, and sensing the presence of God. Et qu'il les tienne de le plus qu'ils pourront captive, and and holding those senses and and the powers um, as if cap, as if captive. So this is very beautiful. This is very beautiful. She goes on to say, Et en cette sorte qu'ils disent leur pater en français, comprenant un peu ce qu'ils disent. And then she said that they, they can go ahead and say the, uh, the uh, Our Father in French, not in Latin. See, back in those days, the, the Mass, which she was a Catholic, the Mass, which many people were, was in Latin. Everything was done in Latin. And she says to say the uh, Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, in, in French. In, in other words, in your native tongue. Say it in your, in your tongue. Understanding a little bit of what you say. Et pensant que Dieu est au-dedans d'eux et veut bien être leur Père. And thinking that God is within and wants to be your father. That's very beautiful. The, the Lord's Prayer says our father, doesn't it? That's right. He actually is. He's our parent. He's, he's your closest relative. He's your parent spirit. He's the father you've never known. All you've known is earthly authority authorities on the outside. You've known your earthly father who undoubtedly failed you, your earthly mother and other people, other authorities, teachers and all the others. See, and they all had feet of clay and uh, many of them deceived you or disappointed you. They weren't there for you or they, they ha or they had some kind of love but it wasn't a good love. It was, it was enmeshing. It was enabling. See, it was condescending. Okay. So basically what she's saying, you practice this method of prayer, you, you become still. 
close your eyes. And she says that closing your earthly eyes opens your, your, um, the eyes of the soul, which is actually true. The way I teach this, it's the same as hers, really, just a little different technique, uh, just a slightly different trivial uh, parts of it, but, no, but nothing vastly different. But what I say, I think is very helpful. I say to sit and close your eyes and look at the inside of your eyelids. When you look at the inside of your eyelids, it's like looking at a big screen TV with no picture on it. Okay, so it's a big screen TV. There's no picture, but there's some kind of white noise there or some kind of little patterns of light, little pixels of light, little little movements of, of light or warm glow. Okay, something like that on the big screen TV. When you close your eyes, you look at the inside of your eyelids and you see the big screen TV and look at those little patterns of light, little pixels of light. See? So your the eyes of your soul are actually observing spiritual light. Okay? So that's one good thing. The other good thing is that you're still. And the other good thing is that you're not lost in the imagination. See, when we've been totally corrupted by the outside, loving people and hating them, and emotions and excitement and study and words and pressures and teases and challenges, it gets inside. When it gets inside, then your mind goes round and round and round. See, you sit quietly, look at the inside of your eyelids. Now you're not lost in your thoughts. See? And while you're doing that, you can also become aware of your hand, like your right hand in your lap or by your side, or your hands if you'd like to become aware of both hands. See, it's very similar. See how you're recollecting yourself? You're keeping your powers within. You're closing your external eyes and opening up the eyes of your soul, like Madame Villon said. But I add a little something extra. I add looking at the inside of your eyelids at the big screen TV and seeing the little pixels of light, patterns of light. And also, I say to be aware of your hands. So you do both at the same time as you're looking at the little pixels of light on the inside of your eyelids. You're also aware of your hands until they become a little bit tingly. When you become aware of your hand, or your hand, let's say your hand, it becomes a little bit tingly. And you can assist yourself in being aware of your hand by noticing one finger at a time. Notice your thumb. Feel your thumb. Feel the blood flowing into your thumb. It becomes a little bit tingly. And notice your first finger. Pay attention to your first finger. Just notice your first finger. No effort is required. Just gently notice your first finger. It feels a little tingly. You can feel the blood flowing into it. And notice your second finger. It becomes a little tingly. Feel the blood flowing into your fingers. Now notice your third finger. Just be aware of your third finger. Be aware of it by your side. Okay, as you're looking at the inside of your eyelids. Okay, and then your fourth finger. Now notice your fourth finger. It becomes a little bit tingly as you notice it. You can feel the blood flowing into your hand. It may become a little bit warm as you notice it. That's the meditation exercise right there. See how simple? You could also call it a short and easy method of prayer. Prayer is, prayer is um, a rapport with the Heavenly Father. It's like a little child comes to the good earthly father. And a lot of times the good earthly father can tell what's happening with the little child. Can't, can't he? He can see a little, a little uh, smile or an excitement or... A little tear in the eye, 
sees the expression on the child's face and he knows what what's already going on before the child even has to ask or say anything. That's the way it is with your heavenly father. Madame Guillaume very properly says that, that he is your father. Okay? My name is Roman.